Let's Talk Oculus, a VR podcast, is proudly sponsored by the good folks at Patreon. If you want to support the show, join us on patreon.com forward slash Let's Talk Oculus. What's up, Oculus nerds? Welcome back to Let's Talk Oculus, episode 150. I'm your host, as always. I'm Dan, and I'm joined by my green host, as always. It's Samson. How are you doing? I am doing well. I don't know that I'm always green, yeah. but today I, we are indeed wearing the the evergreen green, I guess you'd, sure. you'd probably call it. We're both matching today. We're We've got matching. a lot to get into, though. Yeah, we, we have an absolutely jam-packed show. There is games after games after games. We've had the uh, VR, ga- VR game showcase, which is what we're going to cover today. We've also, um, I mean, Gamescoms this week, for those of you listening live or live or as this show's um, announced. Uh, we're recording on this, tu- uh, this on Tuesday, so we've just seen the Batman Arkham Shadow gameplay trailer as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but we'll save any other Gamescom, st- Gamescom stuff till the week after um for sure but yeah samson we've got a lot of stuff to go in fact i don't think we're going to talk about what we've been playing until the very last minute of the show to be honest we've got so many games to be there's some good stuff there though there is some good stuff there is some good stuff and if the uh podcast sounds slightly different uh me personally i'm in a my house is currently empty because i'm moving to the east coast from from the west coast and we're in a very makeshift setup my laptops are balancing on each other um just to create some (laughs) some depth and such but let's talk about batman arkham shadow first because we just had the gameplay reveal or just for us as as you know as it's on a tuesday as we're recording um the gameplay trailer showed off there's about two and a half minutes um in there and it showcased a lot of um, new stuff that we needed to know, like how's the gameplay going to look like? How's the how's the ste- how's the like stealth? How's the detective mode? How's the maneuverability with the grappling? How's how's the combat going to work uh, in this game? Uh, Sam, so I want to read you a little quote um, from the developers first. Uh, camouflage. Uh, they said, "You'll need to master all of Batman's abilities in order to save Gotham City." Set between the events of Batman Arkham Origins and Batman Arkham Asylum, you'll step into the shoes of a relatively young and increasingly confident Bruce Wayne as he takes on the Rat King, a dangerous new criminal with a cultish following. And we've got a release date of October. Samson, tell me about this game. Did you see the trailer? Did you enjoy the trailer? Well, it's less a release date and more a release month. That's fair. That's fair. It's October. Uh, this is, th- I saw a lot of things I liked in. The grapple looked pretty cool. It, Batman, off the bat, uses it to draw an enemy in and then uses it to get away. Cool mm. stuff. Cool stuff. Yeah. I like that. Combat looked pretty nice. Uh, it really reminded me of the Arkham games, which is then used in many other games where mm-hmm. you fight a mass of enemies and you kind of get, like, they have a little signifier above them where you can you know, tap X and you get them and all that. Uh, There wasn't like the tap X, but you saw those sort of indicators and the combo was going on. Uh, Mm -hmm. And there were indicators to which direction they were in. It seemed that didn't seem that intrusive. I don't know. Look, it it was all pretty exciting, Dan. It all looked pretty good. And then the sneak where you could sort of see through the walls and the sort of flying, falling with style, if you will. Falling it'll, the style, yeah. It, I'm, I'm, it got me. It got me even more excited than I was before. Then mm. and and camouflage is is now. If if you know, I'm hyping this up pretty big here. Probably <laughs> too much, but camouflage could be. If this is a big hit. They could become the superhero VR studio. They could. They I mean, they, Iron Man. Iron Man was was their last time. Now I watched. Um, they've been doing uh, a few developer interviews uh, on their like YouTube page, and you should do, definitely go check them out. And I was listening to one that they posted probably a week or two before. No, no gameplay footage. There's, there's a few bit of concept art in there, but um, you get to understand how the, the the game is. They've done a lot of, a lot of these actually. Um, and yeah, so they were saying that Iron Man VR is a much smaller game than what this is going to be. Like, this is a full-fledged title. Iron Man VR felt like a bit of a full-fledged title, but at the same time, it was um, a handful of missions uh, and such. So I guess, 
the, the Batman game that was on PSVR 1, that was just more of a tech demo, 15 minutes, 30 minutes experience. Iron Man was more than that, um, but it seems like Batman, they said, is going to be a full-fledged game. They're not sure exactly, uh, well, they've not said how how many hours it's going to be, but but just judging from what they're saying, it looks like it will be, you know, like around that sweet 8 to 10 hour spot of like Walking Dead and such, which is one of the games that they've got a lot of inspiration from as well. So I'd highly recommend um, watching that if you're super hyped. It's like 26 minutes. Um, and now you've seen the gameplay it's much easier to listen to him because it, oh, it all makes sense now. When he talks about the combat, you now can see it in the trailer. There are a few things I'm nervous about. And by a few mm-hmm. things, I mean mostly I don't really want to be sitting through long, long cutscenes too. Mm. How they do the cutscenes and that, it, 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 that's, a, that's a, not a small deal. No, if, if, if they're anything like the actual Arkham games on the flat screen consoles, uh, not many cutscenes whatsoever. Like though, that, I remember playing the Arkham games. Like you'll probably have the the intro cutscene, which might be like good five minutes or so, where they'll go and set the scene of Gotham and set the scene of where where the environment and all the the, the bad people, shall we say? Um, and then there's like hardly any cutscenes throughout the whole game. Generally, you know, it's more like you'll have some talking dialogue bits and such, but there's not much cutscenes. So it might be similar to that. It might be similar. They might. It, what what I saw, what I really liked about it is that it really did feel like it was from the Arkham series. And I know that sounds a bit easy to say because obviously it's what it's called Batman Arkham Shadow, but it might not have been it might not feel as, as Arkham as it does, but it does really feel like it was just, it's just another game from that series. Uh, and they've, they've captured it. Well, all the goons and everything that they like say, and the voice actors, I mean, the, the voice actor for, for Batman is the same one that does um, the same uh, Batman origins. I think that was like the, like spin off title a little bit that the main developers didn't make, but um, there's the same person there. And then um, doing the goons and all those voices, they're all the same as well. And that, kind of gritty style and the quest 3 graphics the graphics feel like a a as well as, as uh, from the trailer it looks like a ps4 kind of graphics kind of so it, kind of, it fits that mold or ps3 ps4 is where these games came out as well uh, and it kind of fits that perfectly in the, with the art style so samson i'm this is my hyped game of the year this is my hyped uh, game of the, the well game of the year game of the rest of the year shall we say um i think i'm most excited about this than than anything else <laughs> anything else that we're going to talk about so don't worry about listening I'm, to the fun. <laughs> i'm probably just as excited as your behemoth really though right. we've seen less of it i guess i did like uh the way the combat was done um it seems like uh like you said there's like symbols on the the the, the npcs shall we say um or the bad guys and it's it's goons. it looks or the goons, right? In goons, and what I saw from that interview was that um, you can look at goon, and you'll have this little target on him, and then basically you just you press the trigger, and then you reach out to do a punch, and then you fly straight over to him, and then you can start that starts your combo, and then you can still you can continue fighting and such, and then you can look to the other person, do the same trigger move, and start fighting and such. So. You know, the Arkham series notoriously had amazing combat because you just bash that square button and maybe the triangle button um, and the triangle is the counter, but you just bash that square button and just be like combo, 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 combo. It's very straightforward. And it looks like they've kind of replicated that um, a yeah. little bit. Just how like Assassin's Creed kind of replicated the combat well um, from their games as well. It looks like they've really... The, it's really built from the ground up in VR, but they've really thought about how to keep it re, uh, keep it similar to the actual Arkham games on the flat screen. So um, it looks like, I mean, only time can tell. We've got to play it, right, as such. But the uh, I think I've watched this trailer three or four times now, and the combat looks very good from what we're seeing. It looks, looks good. Like and uh, that's part one. <laughs> and, and and that's part one I, I thought i saw a little poster that it said october 17th but i all i'm seeing now is that it's just out in october here is a quick thing samson i'm pretty confident on this and it, it makes sense now that we know that it's in out in october but since this is a quest 3 exclusive this must be the quest 3s um, um like a day and date um game like the launch game for it I could see that happening. You think it'll I come could, with them? 
I can see them doing it. I don't know if it will, but I can see them. I mean, the camouflage is now owned by um, Oculus Studios, um, obviously Meta. Um, so they could easily do like an Asgard's Wrath kind of feel. Like you buy the Quest 3S from now till December or whatever, and it comes with Batman for free. Like I, I can see them doing it for sure. I could see them doing it for. And, and remember, it's just it's just out on Quest 3. It's not coming to Quest 2. It's not coming to PlayStation, or at least not now. Um, you never know in the future. But this is just Quest for now. Uh, Quest 3 for now. So it will well, be Quest damn. 3, Quest 3S. I will say we're coming up on a year of this for Assassin's Creed, right? It was October or November last year. So yeah. I'm wondering if that was maybe a, a year timed exclusive. We will see. Yeah, we will see. It doesn't. I, we've not heard anything. We've not heard any murmurs for it, right? Yeah, or no anything murmurs. Else that. No, but yeah, I'm I'm super excited for this game. I, I will t- probably talk about it more next week um, when I've seen the trailer 24 more times. Um, but there yeah. might be some more stuff. Who knows? There might be more, more stuff. All right, so that's Batman. Uh, let's dive into all of the announcements, the VR game show game showcase. Um, this was last last week, and um, it was around half an hour long, I, I believe. The the, yep. the game showcase, yeah. Um, what did you think, Samson? Just in a, a more of initial reaction before we get into each announcement here. I I, I was pretty amped, Dan. I was probably seven seven three. I think in a chat I threw out an eight. I was probably a little overzealous there. Mm. Probably like a seven seven two, seven three. It was pretty good though. I'm I'm very excited about probably four or five of these games. Ooh, like I, I, I d- d- definitely want to play them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought I, I would say similar to you. I'd probably say it was like a solid seven and a half out of ten. Um it was as a showcase wise, it was great. It was game after game after game. It was like proper Nintendo Direct style and, and, and such. It kind of like the the Quest gaming showcase in a way. Um, they they did it really well. It was a good half an hour in and out. And some of the games that they were announced were like some some surprises in here, as we'll get into in a moment. Um, but uh, a, a lot of games that I never thought were actually going to come, um, which we'll talk about. But yeah, I thought it was really well done, and you know, hopefully it becomes a yearly thing. I mean, it obviously depends on developers as well. But it sounds like it was quite Twice successful. Twice a year. Twice a year. That's, is that that's, what they said, or is it? No, no that's my hope. hope. Everybody does it twice a year. Upload does two two a year, right? Don't they? Yeah, winter and summer. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, there's a Nintendo Direct every other month or whatever, and so is the PlayStation. <laughs> like it's never just once a year. Yeah, you're right. That'd be cool if it could be. It'd be more. I love the fact that after this showcase, after this half an hour, even before we saw the Batman stuff for Gamescom, like this, this fall is now packed. Um, there's a lot of good games coming. Add that to Behemoth, Batman, Alien. You know, some of the big hitters like that. Hitman. Um, Hitman, Maestro. Let's not forget that. Even though that's an indie Dan, title. I was, I was starting with Hitman because that's what we were. That's the first one on the list. I was trying to segue, and you just yeah, you just went, you just, just went continue. right past it. Well, so I'm saying there's loads of games, there's loads of games. So let's get into it, Samson. Um, like you said, Hitman Three VR was the the first game that they showed. I actually didn't put this in order. It would have been smart if I did, but I just, just went through them all. But Hitman Three was the first one. Um, we got a gameplay trailer, uh, so we can see exactly exactly how it was. Uh, no. Still no announcement um, in terms of release date. It's still just coming this summer, but we're, I'm expecting it. It comes next month uh, more than anything. It comes in September. But uh, Samson, tell me, tell me about it. Tell me about Hitman. What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Are you hyped? Not as hyped as I am for Batman, but I'm I'm cautiously excited about this one. I do mm. I do like pretending to enjoy stealth and then just blasting my way through the levels. So I'm excited I can do that. I'm going to enjoy changing and hiding people. It's, it's very stylized, it seems, specifically yeah. the NPCs and all that. I imagine that's to keep their polygon count down or whatever. I don't mm-hmm. know. For sure. Uh, I'm I'm liking the way it looks, Dan. You know, picking up things, the banana peel slipping, sneaking up on people. Yeah, using different They're, weapons. Yeah, there are, there are very Hitman s things that 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 look like the they're here. They're here. This looks like a great Hitman adaptation. 
You got mm-hmm. VR interactions. That was a big complaint about the last one. I never played the last one. Yeah. You could play in VR. But yeah, I'm cautiously excited about this. You know? Cautiously excited. What is what is your what is your Hitman history? Mostly um, Hitman with- two and some blood money. Hitman 2 and Blood Money. Yeah, I I played... Um, I can't remember what it was called. I'm actually trying to look now, but there was uh, there was like a season of Hitman uh, games, unless it was just called Hitman Season 1 or <laughs> something like that. Um, but there was like a, it was like a season, so that, that have multiple kind of mini games, shall we say, that you can kind of download. Oh, yeah, yeah I such. remember. yeah, yeah. That was on the PS4. They tried to make it like a live service type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think they canned it, but like, um, I I enjoyed that. That was on the PS4. I think it was it was a free, it was free. I think that's why I downloaded it because I never actually had a, a Hitman game before, even though they've been going on for years, like absolute years now, like maybe early aughts, maybe PS1 era almost to unite Hitman. Um, I'm pretty sure, but I, I remember the hit. Can you remember Hitman Go on the iPhone? Did you ever play that? No, no. That the Hitman Go on the phone was really fun. It was like a little board game, and um, it, I think you'd actually love it. To be honest, I, I'm not sure if it's still around. Hitman Go. Uh, they also did like different spin-offs. I think they did like Lara Croft Go and such. I think uh, um, Ubisoft is it Ubisoft that did Hitman? Uh, Square Enix. Square Enix. No, they did. I, um, um, IO Interactive did the OGs. Oh, fair enough. Um, But yeah, Hitman Go, um, super fun game, completely different to, but the the same Mm -hmm. thing where it's like, it's like a tabletop board game in a way. And you're like um, a little Hitman character and, or agent. Square Enix did Hitman Go. Ah, there we go. Um, And, uh, you you know, you've got the, like the, the person you have to assassinate, but you have to, you know, travel around or traverse this kind of board without getting seen or getting hit on such and i it was a really good puzzle game like i had a really good time i'd, I'd probably give it a solid nine out of ten i'm not gonna lie samson get get, get man go I on sh- your phone i realized i should be clear it was hitman 2 silent assassin that i played not hitman 2 it was 2018 hitman the hitman oh. 2 i played came out in 02 and okay. the hitman code oh, name 47 came out in 2000 so I've not played the VR version before, um, but the I I completely love the like cartoony esque cel shaded little bit um, kind of art style that they're going for. Like you said, it's probably just because of of to, to limit the polygons and try and get it run running well. But I actually love it because it's first of all it's not what I expected. The actual Hitman. 3 VR on PlayStation VR, which was the exclusive. I think it came to PC VR as well. That was like more realistic graphics, you know, like you'll have Hitman's hand and it will look like a real hand and all that stuff. But they've gone super cartoon-esque, um, which is, you know, the art style change is a big difference already. It already feels kind of what feel like a different game. Um, and then the trailer looks good because it looks like you can interact with a, a plethora of objects. Like you can, like you said, with the banana, but then you could do... Um, anything you find a little cello you, you not cello let cello is massive a little violin you can smack your head around the violin you can yeah, there's, there's lots of stuff caution. there's caution a lot stuff. Uh, yeah there's a lots of stuff that you can assassinate with someone and, and i'm very curious to see how creative you can get with the with the objects i definitely want to play it super stealth like i would not want to be caught um i don't know if I'd, i'm into this so much that i would want to get it day one though you know I'm curious to see your. I feel like I need like a, a a table of your scale of your cautionally op- optimistic. This seems like it's middle. Um, you see, Behemoth and Batman are the same, um, which might be just above. I'm curious what's at the top of Samsung's overhyped uh, hyped list. Th- those are all at the top. <laughs> it doesn't get above that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Is this day one purchase for you, most likely? Uh, probably so. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, let's move on to the next game. Uh, we got Frenzies. Um, Frenzies is a free-to-play. Uh, we're getting early access in October. Uh, it's, it's by uh, Endreams, um, which have brought many games to the Quest, like uh, Synapse was one actually on the PlayStation that they brought. Um, but Endreams has got quite a few games now for VR. Uh, but like I said, free-to-play, per- PvP shooter, um early access in october it looks like it's laser tag in vr essentially and it's inspired by the games uh like quake and unreal and, and such 
You can play it this kinda, one solo. Oh, gone. It kind of reminds me of that nerf game that got shut down. Yeah, nerf championship or, or something like that yeah. edition. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. If if it gets shut down, I hope not. Um, but this you can play solo. No, no, you no. Can, you can play in teams. Um, and the matches support up to twelve players, and I, there's a lots of matches in there. I, I didn't I didn't write it down, but um, lots of I, bright colors. Lots of bright colors. You can really uh, change your avatar with all these different paint ideas as well. Um, normally, I wouldn't care about this Samsung, but uh, I actually like the look of it, especially solo. It feels like I I, re- I loved the Quake games when I was a kid, like Quake Two, Quake Three. Freaking loved them, and this looks like a bit more of a Splatoon version of Quake uh, in a way. But it yeah. actually looks fun to play. It's 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 really fun to play. What do you think? Uh, yeah, we'll see about this one. I will. It's definitely something I want to try, uh, especially if it's a free beta. Hopefully so. It is. Uh, it, it is. looks like it's going to be a lot of cosmetic type of deal. It mm. it, it, it it's I've got hope for it, but. I don't know that I have the time to add another multiplayer shooter to my consistent, uh, you know, weekly VR sessions. But will I attempt to get in uh, at least a few times? Probably so. It's free. It's free. Why not? Right? No, why not? Um, that's what actually, as you bring that up, that's the only one thing um, a bit more of on a, on a downer is a weird word for this because it's not really the VR games showcase's fault. It's more just um, this is just the, the games that are out. But there was a lot of shooters in this showcase, like a lot of shooters. Like we were back to the VR shooting showcase. You know, there's a lot of shooters in here. So, um, well, <laughs> kind of brings it to the next one. The next one's also done by End Dreams. Uh, complete surprise to me. Uh, this one's Fract. Uh, Fract came. Uh, Fract is, was an exclusive for the PSVR one. Uh, once again, I think they ported it to. It was PC. on Steam. Yeah, yeah. Steam, they so. brought it on PC uh, at some point. Um, this was a complete surprise. Uh, Fract, if you don't know what Fract is, Fract is basically a fast-paced um, shooting game. Uh, like sometimes you're skiing and you're shooting. Sometimes you're climbing and you're shooting. And it's just like go go go. Uh, and this one comes out actually relatively soon. It comes out next week. It's on August. 29th and i was personally in terms of reviews like it's always gotten like gotten like a 7 out of 10 on the playstation vr and a lot of outlets saying that it's great but it's just a bit too short um so i'm, I'm interested to see if they have added more to this I'm, I'm not too sure but the reason why i'm excited for this is this game actually came out just after i had sold my playstation vr one because i came and moved from the uk to vancouver and uh i i was really sad that i missed out on this one because a, a lot of people were hyping like this is like one of the best shooting of like vr shooters on 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 vr at the time so i'm curious to see how it translates um and if it's a good port over but uh, yeah a lot of people like this one how about you samson yeah i tried this one when it came to steam i got pretty motion stick in the first uh First yeah. five five or ten minutes, you're doing the skiing, mm. and then tried to play on a little bit, and I just remember getting real motion sick. Wow! So maybe maybe I'll uh, give another try. Was that a while ago? Like uh, like back in the before you no, had was, your concrete whenever, VR legs? It was whenever it came out for Steam. Oh, you probably played it back then. If this sort of came out on Steam maybe 2018 or something. It was a while ago. Or uh, May fifth, twenty twenty two. Oh, way later than that. <laughs> okay, way later. Um, I'm curious to see if you play it now and see how it feels because your VR legs are pretty strong. Are pretty strong. You can handle much, but yeah, if it's or, or maybe you know, never know. They might have added a bunch more improvements. It, it didn't really give you much from the trailer. It was just like you know, it was just more of a exciting trailer that this is this is coming out. But from what I'm what I'm reading, there's nothing really. Um, really in here uh, i'm just going to read out a quick quote uh from the uh upload vr review just because it's an interesting one they said a uh, fact is a, bl- a blast to play even if it isn't quite the massive shooter epic to be um to round out the psvr era by all means it's an arena based action is polished and thrilling and offering refined fast-paced action with intense combat set pieces that uh but the game's simply over far too soon never getting a chance to really expand on its core elements and deliver the rich experience its mechanics deserve. 
So I mean, that's the kind of the same thing. Like it's, it's a bit short. Did you finish it, or did you just get motion sick and just never play it again? Yeah, I did not. Fin- I did. I stopped playing it. I think <laughs> I returned it. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, Samson, next game, Vendetta Forever. Um, this demo is now available, by the way, if you want to pick up this game. Uh, this seems like to me uh, of like a super hot esque kind of game. Uh, it's a puzzle shooter. Like you move, you. Super esque, super hot esque. Like you move when you kill uh, enemies um, itself, so um, it's not quite super hot. Or when but... you pick up guns, right? Yeah, if you pick up guns and such, and then you start moving. Um, you have to navigate like maze, uh, maze like arenas. Um, it features around sixty levels with online leaderboards to track high scores. There's over fifty challenges in- involved. There's more than fifty weapons. There's there's a lot of content here. There's 18 modifiers, and there's a bunch of collectibles as well. Um, I don't have much to say about this, Samson, apart from that it just looks really fun. Like it looks yeah, this really one fun looks, to play. This one I was kind of excited for. I've, I've installed it. I haven't gotten into the demo yet. Yeah. Yeah, the art style is cool. It's like the cel-shaded. It just, um, it just looks fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's why I couldn't, couldn't really say He's much like more. He's like killing right? these NPCs in like various ways with with weird weapons and trying to do it really fast cool yeah I'm for in. some reason it gives me like uh pistol whip vibes in terms of just the art style um that's what it kind of looks like it looks like a a full game version of pistol whip if you know what i mean Damn, let's just like, let it be itself let's let it be vendetta you forever. gotta you gotta compare for people listening because then they have no idea what it is what if the audio listeners are like i can't see the trailer right now so i need listen to- you're shooting NPCs. It kind of looks like slow mo. You have lots of different guns, from SMGs to shotguns to pistols to throwing darts, knives, samurai Maybe not darts, samurai swords, swords, glass yeah. bottles. Some enemies have armor, and you're teleporting around. You sometimes in the wild, wild west to you're gunslinging to enemies. It looks good. You're sometimes on our the dance style's floor. cool. Our style's cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, let's keep let's keep going. Let's keep going. We have a lot of games to cover, so let's keep going. We've got Band Space. Um, Band this Space looks right up your alley. <laughs> uh, Band Space is coming out um, for Steam and Quest this fall. It's made or oh, it's published by Fast Travel Games. Um, you're using VR motion. Samsung's doing some weird things. I'm playing the get, right I'm playing the keyboard just like in the in, in the ad. <laughs> um, you use your VR motion controls for guitar, keyboard, bass, and drums. It basically looks like Rock Band, but in VR. Um, there's a demo on App Lab if you wanted to pick it up. Um, there's going to be a bunch of songs in there, but what's really cool about it is that the developers confirm that it's integrated with mod.io support, which allows players to easily find and download new songs to expand their library. And you you can also create your own songs using the in-game beat map editor, which also includes tools to edit the lighting in the song to allow complete control over the feel of a new song. And it's out at the end of the year. Samson, this is this game seems like it's got way too much for what it what it what it is. Like yeah. how many features it right. has. You've convinced me to get the free demo though, I'll try it. <laughs> that was it. I'm that not was it. looking forward to it, but I'll spend no. some time. It really is Let's like a uh, rock see. band. It really is rock band, because it's not like oh you need to play the keys perfectly or anything like that, or the guitar perfectly. Are you playing air guitar and such and I like fast got... travel, so Yeah. It puts smash drums and uh, what was the guitar? Air guitar? Was that what it's called? Unplugged. 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 Um, it's like that mixed in with a bit of keyboard and, and bass as well. Um, I'm just I'm I'm curious to hear the songs that you create, Samson. I'm curious to hear what kind of jingles. Wait, are you I thought play? you're playing other people's songs. Aren't you playing songs? You're not creating. Songs. Yeah, but you can also create. You can create your own songs yeah, using the I'm in-game beat map editor. Why not? You need to create songs for me to play. I'm playing. I will create. I'm a, the songs I'm a player. Player. I will create. Play. I will create some fun songs for you. In fact, if anyone on Discord wants to create songs for Samson to play, please create them, and he will. Can play they them. be imported into the demo, or do I have to buy it? Let's These see. are questions I do not have the answers to. These are questions that I do not have the Useless. answers to. <laughs> what kind of podcast is this? Um, anyway, that's band space. 
Uh, moving forward, uh, this is a big surprise. So um, Arizona Sunshine is getting a remake, the first one. Uh, it's going to be completely rebuilt on its next-gen system. Uh, this game obviously came out back in 2016. Uh, it comes with all of the new DLC, which I think is around four different packs of DLC, uh, and is out on October 17th. Uh, that was what October 17th was. It wasn't Batman, it was that. Uh, anyway, it's out on October 17th with an upgrade for those who own it for just $10. Do you own it? No. Um. Never owned it. No, I've, I've never been interested to buy this game, I'm not going to lie, and... I think mostly it was because it came out in 2016. So I just thought, oh, oh you're you just know. biased against old games. I just didn't, just didn't buy it because I thought it was old. <laughs> I, was I, didn't, I didn't get my quest till 2022 or 2021. Uh, maybe 2021. No, 2020. 2020 when the quest two came out. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the reason why I never bought Robo Robo Recall as well. It's the same. What reason. about Red Matter? You played that one. Yeah, that's true. And Vader Immortal. Okay, I'm talking. I'm talking out my ass. Um, tell me about Arizona Sunshine, Samson. You, I haven't played obviously- much. I've played more in the Horde mode, and is a lot of Horde mode mostly at the arcade. It's pretty big at the arcades. This game. Mm. Uh, Did you ever play the second one? I think you downloaded it. No, I have not played the second one. <clears throat> but this one now looks like the second one. Graphically. It does. It does. It looks. It uh, looks identical. Um, and, and I will be getting the the. the it's a ten dollar upgrade if you own it. So I own it, and I did buy the PlayStation VR one version for. It was on sale for like, um, I don't know, six dollars yeah. or ten dollars or something. Oh, nice. So steal now. I'll buy this PlayStation VR two version for a total of twenty. So keep on the lookout, everyone. If Arizona Sunshine gets a sale. Um, in the next month or so, uh, buy it because it's going to make Arizona Sunshine's remake uh, really cheap for you. Um, I don't know what price it is. Um, I believe it's you, thirty. Is it thirty? Because I think the Arizona Sunshine Two is around forty dollars or something. Yeah. It's quite more. It's more of an expensive game uh, on there. But yeah, um, I'm curious if anyone's listening. Um, if you like or enjoy Arizona Sunshine, let us know in the Discord. Um, or in the comments in the YouTube. Uh, I'm really curious because I've, for some reason, just being like a, a zombie shooter, we've had so many zombie kind of games in there, and I kind of got my fix from Walking Dead, to be honest. I'm curious to see if people like really, really like this game. And so I know, I know it's it's a big hitter, but I'm I'm just curious to see why, you know, why you really enjoy that game. Um, and then I might buy it <laughs> as well. I might buy it as well. Uh, okay, so that was a big surprise. That was really fun to see. Um, it's out on all the other systems as well, um, if you are interested. Uh, and then we went to, well, I, like I said, said when we went, I did not do this in order. Uh, the Flat 2 VR, um, this was actually right at the end of the showcase. Uh, Flat 2 VR um, is a, a company formed by uh, friends of the show, um, the Impact Reality crew, who definitely um, help us um, getting podcast guests sometimes and um, help us connect with the different indie developers. And we've had uh, Jasmine on the show before. And we've had Skiva on the show way back uh, before, um, who are part of the Between Realities crew as well. Um, but anyway, they've come together with Flat 2 VR. We talked about it a few podcasts before, but we didn't know what games they're going to come out with. And we thought I thought it was just going to be one, um, but it looks like it's going to be four. So let's start off with Trombone Champ. Trombone Champ is a 2022 uh, rhythm comedy game where you uncover the mysteries of the Trombiverse across a single ga- a single player campaign mode. It features more than 50 songs that range between anthems, classical pieces, of electronica, and more. And it's going to be out this fall. It kind of reminds me of like a like a maestro in a way. Um, you ever played this game on Steam? It, it reminds me of Trombone Champ that I've spent little over an hour playing on steam it's pretty yeah. fun on steam you play by clicking the mouse and you gotta stick with the the notes are going left right to left mm-hmm. and you have a trump trumpet if you will and you click the mouse to make it go up and you let go for to make it go down maybe or yeah something like this and you got to keep it with the notes and uh, it's sort of a meme game I, it was, I was not very good at it but i am excited that they are porting it to vr because this is a whole remake like this is three-dimensional now dan yeah this looks this looks this looks like hordes of fun 
<laughs> I love it. So this is this might be a, a day one purchase for you. You enjoy it because you enjoyed that yeah. flat screen version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Abs- absolutely. This looks um, like a toot. A toot, a toot. Um, the next game is Flat Out, which is um, the Flat Out series. I believe it was Flat Out series more of a PC series. Um, it might have been on PlayStation 2 uh, uh, as well, but it I came out. I played back- on the 360, I think. Oh, okay. Um, So it came out in like 2004 or such. Um, This is a racing game that's described as an adrenaline-fueled demolition derby um, that throws you into chaotic races with destructible environments, wild stunts, and vehicular combat. Um, And then the the development has started, but we don't know any release date. Uh, It kind of gives me some burnout slash... Dirt 2 slash, I don't know if it's a Dirt 2, but just the Dirt games kind of vibes um, about it. Um, I've not played it, though. i never played it. Most of all, it gives me Flat Out vibes because I played the heck out of Flat Out 2. Yeah. It was much better. They added ragdoll effects. You could eject oh, the driver sweet. and fly him, make him go oh, flying. It was, it was a good time, but not in Flat Out 1. Okay, and this is going to be Flat Out 1, I'm assuming. It will it be. Just, it will be. Yeah. No, it's Flat Out 1. But it looks good, Dan. It looks good. I love driving. It's a day. This is this is up there with the others. This is up there with the others. Where is this up there? Well, what are we what are we calling the 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 tier that has Batman and Behemoth in? I don't know. Just uh, just height. They're, they're, they're high tiers. This is, I'm gonna buy this one for sure. Nice for sure. I love erasing him, but it's probably a couple of years out, Dan. Let's be. What real. would you? What would you prefer? Would you prefer this being a um, a top down, like a like if you, you were behind the the? Would you prefer it behind the wheel, or would you prefer yeah. it to be like? I a assume third you'll person? be able to change your perspective, like you could in any yeah, normal racing true. game. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, I pre- I'd play this first person, like I play Gran Turismo, because I'm not a monster. <laughs> Um. Yeah. This this looks really fun. I, I I haven't played the series. I feel like I completely missed out this this series. Um. I'm there's definitely more of the burnout esque. Uh, would be the games that I would I would play. Uh, I think burnout's slightly different, but similar in terms of like the crashes and and, and the stunts that you can kind of do. Um. Uh, but this seems like it's taken that to a whole new level. Um, it looks like you can still buy them on Steam. The flat out games. Yeah. How many are there? Is there like four? Three, there's four. a lot one two there's flat out flat out two flat out ultimate carnage flat out head on okay flat out for the wii flat out three chaos and destruction flat out Jeez. stunt man that was an ios game flat out four total insanity and now flat out vr wow okay that's amazing uh okay so we got flat out trombone champ which are already two of samson's must buy uh, let's move on to the next one. We've got RoboQuest, which is also from Flat 2 VR. Um, this is a fast-paced uh, first-person shooter roguelite. Um, it has like a bit of a comic book-inspired art style, and it actually came out um, on the PC and the Xbox um, just last year. Um, yeah, it's a new one. Um, it's set in a futuristic world where humanity struggles to survive against hordes of mechanical foes. You are tasked with navigating randomly generated environments and taking down bosses, playing as an upgrading, un- upgradable guardian that can synergize powerful abilities. Where's this on your hype list, <laughs> Sam? So I'm just going to ask you that first. Yeah, it's not that high, but it, it does look good. I actually own this one on Steam because I wanted to play it with the UE VR mod. Mm. I haven't gotten around to it yet. So I guess that shows I do own it, but I haven't yet really spent the time to get into it. So I just want to say something. Uh, I just went on Steam to have a look at it. Ten out of ten reviews on Steam. Ten. Yeah, out yeah, of yeah. 10. It's a very highly thirteen thousand reviews. Uh, ten out of ten. That's impressive. That's imp- you I've can't, never do, you of can't do better. You can't do better. Oh, you don't got your ear to the ground. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't have Steam. There uh, you go. I don't have Steam. This looks really great. Yeah, and in flat screen, you do have a lot of excuses, though. <laughs> yes, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> it's on Xbox too, but you don't have one of those either. No, no, this I think this is only on Xbox and Steam. Yeah, yeah, does it work on the Steam Deck? Not like I have one, but I'm just curious. I don't know. 
Okay, I, th I thought you'd know. Um, fair enough. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's coming out of VR regardless. Um, this one also, no release date. It probably could take a little while for this one. Um, yeah. But this is a cool announcement considering this is a pretty much a brand new game. I mean, uh, Trombone Champ is fairly new as well, to be fair, but that's more... You know, it's, it's less. Um, it's less taxing, shall we say? Where yes. this seems like a a, a bigger game, to, a bigger, um, bigger thing to bring port over. So, uh, I'm actually curious. I'm gonna have to look at this game um, on flat screen uh, in a moment, actually, because uh, I did not realize that this was um, a fairly new game until I just read that out. Not like I do the script or anything. Um, so where's this on your on your list? Would you? Where, I didn't hear you again. Sorry. What where, where was that on your list in terms of hype? It's not. It's not that high. It's also. It's hard to get that hyped about these really far away ones. So, like, I'm That's pretty true. hyped for Flat Out, but it's 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 over a year away, Dan. That's well, true. At least probably at least, well over a year. So. At least Trombone's coming out this fall. Um, okay, last one from Flat to VR. It's the Wrath of Aeon of Ruin. I don't know if I butchered Nailed that it. name. Uh, that's with the Team Beef um, folks who have obviously ported lots of games now. Team Beef. Um, like Doom oh. and Quake and all that. Um, this game is actually inspired by the same games that Team Beef have kind of ported over um, as Doom and Quake. Um, Wrath is described as a hardcore first-person shooter that sees you exploring a dark and decaying world across non-linear levels, promising brutal combat vari and um, with various powerful weapons. I actually really thought this was um, uh, Doom, to Quake. be honest, when no, I was Doom. watching. No, no, I thought I, it was Doom. I played this Just the bloodiness of it, right? Oh, you played it? Yeah. How, how was this? It, it's, it was an early... So Team Beef's been working on this for a while, so I was a part of their Patreon, got an early access build. Yeah. It felt like those Doom Quake, but a slightly more modern. Mm. Uh, very fast-paced. If you're into these boomer, fast-paced shooters, you're going to love it. I think this will come after... Uh, trombone champ but well before flat out rebel quest simply because they were working on it already mm. oh, yeah and, yeah but yeah if you're in, if you're into that type of genre or those 90s shooters get it you're gonna you're, you're, you're gonna love the way you look in this game yeah so when this when this was shown i i thought it was doom but then i thought it was generally a game that was out in the 90s but it actually came out on steam in february this year <laughs> which is mental i think it had like um i think it came out on the flat screen consoles in like 2019 but it came out mm. on steam this year which is which is mad and uh just to know a little bit more about it it's built on the modified version of the quake engine yeah, um, which go. means it's the first game that's been released from that engine in nearly 20 years which is why it looks like quake or, exactly or like, like doom this, or yeah. that kind of feel um, of it. it looks it looks really cool i think that's a great idea um by the way sorry i uh, just correct on the date it came out on steam in february came on the flat screen consoles in uh, april of this year um i think 2019 was the steam early access uh, is what it was so it actually came out this year which is wild to see that it's already been trying to port over and such and uh, for your steam deck folks it is verified <laughs> there you have it. as i just saw um samson where does this list on your uh on your um i will buy this on day one i wonder how much this one will cost i think yeah. i get i think i get it though because i supported the patreon that i saw some reddit post about if you supported the patreon but between a certain amount of time at a certain level yeah they'll give you a key so i gotta sort through that fair enough very good. And or uh, hopefully maybe get one through Impact. Mm. Uh, RoboQuest is Steam Deck uh, <laughs> available. <laughs> just because we were so talking flat about out, that. Dan. So it's flat out. Just because I wanted to, just because we were talking about that, I just wanted to <laughs> clarify that for anyone wondering. Uh, okay, so they're the Flat 2 VR. Um, quick mention on Flat 2 VR. Knocked out of the park there with these four releases, to be honest. I think... Uh, or, I mean, we just talked about all four of the games, but all four of the games look like they're a, a, a variety of, of games and, like, fairly new. Like, I, I thought they were going to go really far back in terms of the games that they'll port over. 
Um, but no, the all of the no. games apart from Flat Out, I guess, are like relatively recent titles, which is uh, great to see. So um, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm, I know you are too, Samsung, with these these four titles. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, very much looking forward to all things Flat VR. I wish their studio well, and I look forward to after these, and hopefully these are hits. Yeah. They're only going to get bigger and cooler games. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I really hope they do really well. Um, moving My height meter for flat to VR is, is, yeah. Yeah. They're, what roof you need you need to you need to you need to come out with some like the the tears uh, maybe next show you they're all high t- these tears, tears are, are... Like, it's over here it's over here it's up here it's over there it's like, you need tears tears for fears i do need tears um okay uh, let's talk about some tiers. We've got Mannequin. Um, uh, it's now coming out on the Quest and the Steam store relatively soon on September 12th at 20 bucks. Uh, this has been on early access. So in fact, you could probably still get it as early access or maybe as a demo unless I've pulled it. Um, sometimes I pull it um, as soon as this stuff is announced. Um, it's a hide-and-seek multiplayer game if you've not heard of it before. Um, once again, from Fast Travel Games, um, it's got cross-platform multiplayer support as well so if you're on steam you can play it there um but basically just a quick little spiel about it uh, three aliens can freeze to blend into your surroundings while two agents must detect them and kill them with a single shot uh, that takes place over four different maps and those custom modes uh, will be available at launch um did you ever play this or did you ever get into the early access i have not no i did watch a little bit of it on streams i think uh Maybe Farmer was streaming that. I I don't really understand it, quite honestly. It <laughs> yeah. sounds it sounds it sounds interesting if you're into this type of thing, mm. and it looks good for that. It looks like a quality hide and seek. Like the people look like they're having fun, Dan. But it I can't looks really, really speak much more than that. It looks really fun for sure. Um, I I I think yeah, you got to play it. If, if you're interested in potentially a multiplayer game like this, look into it. Yeah. But I can't really say more than that. No, it's 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 a really interesting idea with, with the hide and seek. I don't think we've ever seen anything like that. Um, but, yeah, it, it's one of those that you obviously need people to play with um, and such for it to be super fun. But yeah, uh, I like the idea. I like the concept of it. I mean, I'm I don't know if I'd play it, but I'm I'm more intrigued to see what other people show on like youtube and such about it it seems like a very fun game if you have like a few people uh, like six of you playing essentially i think it'd be a really fun game i'm not six of you five of you uh all right um we've got grim the next which um is by combat waffle studios who made ghost of tabor uh it's basically a mul- multiplayer shooter which is set on mars and it's coming to quest uh i don't think there's a release date if i'm not mistaken yeah, yeah there's so. no it just says later this year um for a public alpha test but yeah it'll be like 2025 um i mean i'm not really into these type of games samson i know you don't really love ghost of tabor but you like breaches um does this one do anything for you at least from this little i guess no. not really a gameplay trailer it's more of a teaser uh um, this one i'm very very low not that I'm like, oh, this looks terrible, but it doesn't look like it's up my alley. PvP and PvE, not generally my thing type of extraction, you know, where mm. you lose all your loot. There are wipes. I don't I don't need other people wiping me. Yeah, this game's going to have, it's not just a shooter. It's also, like you said, you have to find food, water, materials, and, and craft and, and, and all that stuff. And I, I don't think you're into that. Um to be honest, that 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 crafting, that into the radius kind of feel uh, of it. So, um, but yeah, anyway, that's grim. If you're into that, um, <laughs> that's grim. Grim in I don't know if grim is a Hell term is. in the UK in the in, Amer- in America, but in the UK, grim is like oh it's gross. Yeah. It's like, oh, you grim. It yeah. is also a word here. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, okay, we've also got more from Combat Waffle Studios. We've got Silent North, which is another VR shooter. We've got shooter, 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 shooter. Um, this is a survival shooter right up Samson's alley. It's a PvP versus everyone um, VR shooter, which is based in the Alps. 
Um, did I tell you it's a VR shooter? I forgot to mention that. Uh, you are tasked with battling uh, against the elements while fending off infected and other players, scavenging for gear, crafting essentials. So this sounds this is the perfect game for you. Uh, the studio states that you can team up with others or fight solo across this unpredictable, ever-changing landscape. And it is going to be out in 2025. Um, I speak for you, Samson, is that this is definitely on the bottom of your list as well. Um, maybe Combat Waffle Studios aren't the games, aren't, aren't producing the games you like. Uh, yeah, it looks it's, cool. It's okay, you it's can have the Northern Lights. Like them. There's not the, many games set in the first doesn't realms. look that great when it, you're looking at the gameplay. Or, yeah. yeah, I don't even know if this is really gameplay, right? I don't know. The, it, the zombies look kind of weird. Honestly, the style looks the art style it, like. Uh, yeah, I need to see more. It's too way too early to really get even a read for me. But I'm not yeah. that interested. Just based on the, it's a PvP. Yeah, uh, me too. It's not for me. Um, great if people like these kind of games, but I've just done with too many shooters. Too many. Sh- I like I like a few, but like too many similar shooters now. I mean, um, I like shooters. I play breachers every week. That's true. But that's true. But like there's so breachers. many similar ones out there. Is what I meant. Um, Okay, uh, next one. I'm actually another shooting game ish, but it's a little bit different. This is this is the kind of shooters I'm talking about. So we've got Action Hero, which basically makes you a movie star. It looks like you're a stuntman. Um, it kind of <laughs> it's like a VR version of Tom Cruise, is what Upload VR describes it as. But basically, you become a protagonist of five movies, and each movie offers four acts that you can that see you take on challenges like ninjas, thugs, and even raptors as you star in your own version of Jurassic Park. Um, to boost the action movie vibes, Action Hero is also in slow motion until you move. So a little bit super esque again, uh, in, a, in a way. Um, you can punch dinosaurs in this one, which looked fun. Uh, All right, Dan. <laughs> my only question is, can you watch the movie afterwards? That'll be fun. You could rewatch what your scene was like. That'll be fun. I mean, I, think. It, I almost feel like it's necessary for your, your plan. It's a man that's supposed to be, you know, recording things. Like I yeah. want to be able to watch what I've watched that recording. But then, yeah. the, but even outside that, it it looks neat. It looks neat. It looks fun. Quick fun. Quick You're not going to yeah. spend a million hours in this. It's right up my alley, Dan, in that regard, even though it is a single player shooter. It, 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 it looks cool. I don't know that I'll, you know, finish this one, but no. I'll, I'll enjoy the hell out of a few of those levels. It seems like a two-hour game of fun. Um, they'll have a good, bla- literally a blast in, and then, you know, you're, you're done. So um, I'd, I'd be super up for this, um, to be honest, to play this game, depending on how much it is. Like, I'd pay 20, 25 bucks for us, um, maybe. On my wish list. Maybe. On the wish list, yeah. There's no um, release date for this, but I think this is just part of the... This was coming out later this year, but um, there's no release date for this. I hope it does come out later this year because this looks really fun to play. Uh, Samsung, final one. Uh, Escaping Wonderland's new trailer um, uh, was just released and it's going to be out in the September. Now, Escaping Wonderland is a Alice in Wonderland game that I didn't realize as we spoke about a few episodes ago. Um... Samson, do you want to talk? You want to say the spiel in this one? That's yeah, our last sure. game. Yeah, the, the last one you're going to let me read? Nice. Um, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> Tumble down the rabbit hole into escaping Wonderland, where riddles run riot. Join Curious Molly on a new adventure through the beloved world of Alice in Wonderland. Puzzle through perplexing challenges in an enchanting landscape, where up is down, left is right, and nothing is quite as it seems. Enjoy hours of gameplay filled with brain teasers, enchantment, and delightful nonsense. Discover what Molly is really escaping from and help her recover her memory if you dare. Out September 26th, pre-order now for a 10% discount. $19.99, $17.99 USD with the discount. <laughs> Thanks for the pricing at the end there. Uh, did you ever play the other one? Yeah, and I didn't beat it. I got really far, though, and then I got stuck or something happened. I did play for several hours, so I got. I, I can't. I should go back to that one and, and replay it. 
Yeah, September 26th, as you mentioned. So Did you play it time. at all? Uh, Sam, so I didn't yeah. even realize it was Alice in Wonderland before we talked about this like a couple episodes ago. So no, <laughs> so no, not absolutely. Just down absolutely the rabbit not. hole. Down the rabbit hole, yeah. No, I uh, did not play it, no. Um, it looks really good, though. Like, it looks really polished. It's too old for um, you. Yeah, it might be too old for me. Um, I'm a young soul. I'm a young soul. Turning 30, but I'm a young soul. Um, yeah. It would, would you get this one, then, if you really liked the, the the first one? Would you probably pick this one up, or would you just wait? And I'm going to wait on it. Like, I'm in no rush to get this one, but I, I, it is something that I think I want to play. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, all right, perfect. That that's every game. Do you want to play this one? No, but no. it looks good. It looks good to be honest. I, I just want I just I, I just I action hero. Huh? <laughs> if well, you're going to get through. three of these, are you what three would you get, Dan? Yeah, uh, that's a perfect question because I was literally going to ask you the same. Um, I would get. I've already committed to more than three. I would get if I was going to get three of them. I would get Hitman three. I would get um, Vendetta Forever, and I will also get uh, duh, 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 duh. I'd probably get Action Hero as my three. How about yourself? You including the the flats of VRs too? I did, yeah. The wild. All I right, did. flat out. Robo Quest, Wrath, the Trombone. <laughs> no. <laughs> God. Out, probably Trombone Champ and Arizona Sunshine remake. Oh, fair enough. But I and next next the next two close are Vendetta Forever and Action Hero Turns. I thought you were gonna say Band Space. No. And then Hitman's <laughs> in that I mean you know, Hitman's up there, but I feel like well, if I really had to pick, if I if I had to really pick them, well, forget I, three for a second. Just tell me what games that you'd really like. You'd like Hitman three. You'd like Vendetta yeah, Forever. I, I mean, I'm gonna, I, I'm probably gonna get Hitman three, Vendetta Forever, Arizona Sunshine two because it's a ten dollar upgrade. Trombone Champ, Flat Out's a commitment I'm making for years in the future, and uh, Action Hero, and then Escaping Wonderland eventually. Nice. Escaping Wonderland is probably a sale buy for me. You know? Mm-hmm. There's probably another sale buy in there. Maybe mm-hmm. Action Hero would be a sale buy for me. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, so like a pretty successful showcase overall, and especially yeah. for you um, with the, the amount of games in there that you you would pick up, which is, which is amazing. So... Um, fantastic uh game showcase um hopefully there's another one uh sooner rather than later if not well obviously in the next year um all right that will do for our jam pack part one uh part two we have just a few external news stories to talk about um and then we'll talk about what we've been playing so we'll see you then hey we know public lobbies and vr games can be a bit toxic feel a bit empty at times. That's why we created the Let's Talk Oculus Discord, a friendly community that you can join for multiplayer meetups, general VR chat, the game, and chat about VR, fitness motivation, and there's even a very impressive 3D printing channel. Join over 100 of our community members in the Let's Talk Oculus Discord for free. The link is right in the description welcome back to part two um we're going to talk about the other vr news and uh, and such so uh samson kick us off what's our what's our first vr news which i think is another game yes yes from cyborn the makers of hubris comes wall town wonders which looks quite literally like a town of wonders coming out of your wall mixed reality game (laughs) The and the little the little characters look mm-hmm. really good, like they did in Hubris, but they're very tiny. Yeah, and and graphically everything looks very good. So it looks like you're sort of building things on your wall. At one point, somebody's flying in, lands on on a book on the on the desk. So mm-hmm. it looks like it just really incorporates well into your your play space here. 
and I am very excited. Can't really tell what's going on is, you know, a minute long (laughs) teaser announcement teaser. But I am you. You got my attention, Cyborg. You got my attention. Mm, It looks really fun, actually. I would highly recommend looking at the trailer. Um, The way you like punch the walls and then all of a sudden a little town get built. And they said there's over uh, there's around 100 buildings to unlock. There's a bunch of different customizable options. So no two towns ever look the same. There's around 40 different characters to meet. Um, Like you said, it's on the wall, but they also come out in front of you like an airplane and and such like that. Um, And it's hand tracking as well it's meant to be like a relaxing game so looks a bit different to hubris yeah it looks looks super cozy to play um no release date right just an announcement yeah just the announcement teaser yeah just an announcement um it does say it's coming autumn 2024 uh so this year i thought autumn 2024 now but obviously not um so we'll see that'll that'll be after summer Add that to your list, your ever-growing list uh, of games to get this 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 winter um, or autumn. Okay, next news story. Uh, the I just want to. It's not really quest related, but the the Pico Four Ultra just got announced. Um, uh, only in China. Uh, it seems like what I'm reading is that it's like a like a Quest Three Plus, like an upgraded version of the Quest Three. Um, but it has some cool things um, with it. Uh, one thing I wanted to highlight for, for the show here uh, is the leg trackers that you can buy. So uh, once again, obviously China only, um, but it's $60 a pair and they just strap on to each one of your legs. It's 24 hours battery life. It's 27 grams. It works just like the Sony uh, Mocha Pie, the, those little like six things that they had, but that was way more expensive. That was six of them. Um, the bite dance also claims that the average position error is five centimeters and the average angle error is as low as six degrees and the accuracy is, uh, not less than 98%, uh, which is really good. And the latency is less than 20 milliseconds as well. Uh, and obviously this is great for, um, something like VR chat, but it was in, in the little trailer, they were also showing playing like a sports game and, and such like that on there. Um, reason why I wanted to highlight it is that. I'm just curious. Do you think Meta would could do would do something like this as well to bring leg tracking, or do you think they'd want to make sure it works through the headset rather than needing to buy extra accessories to strap on yourself? Meta is into copying people, so if they do well, Meta could maybe do them. I don't know that there's oh, there's Demand. not that many instances. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of you're going into like buying the guitar for Guitar Hero type of deal, you know. Yeah. May, I, maybe I could see them incorporating those into a Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you get them with a Supernatural subscription and then incorporate be, better incorporating legs into Supernatural workouts. Mm-hmm. I definitely see something like that. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. I think this would be like a bit of a fitness accessory more than anything, but the, you don't need legs and anything else apart from fitness and obviously vr chat and such which could be helpful for dancing uh, or dancing games um but yeah just an interesting one um uh, we'll see if they do it um and speaking of copying people i mean the pico 4 was like a complete copy and paste from the quest so it could go both ways it can go both ways um another really quick news story uh meta quest has just shown off a hdmi link feature so they've got a new app called uh, hdmi link and uh, it lets you view your screen in, in most devices um, that can take a HDMI or a DisplayPort output. So you need a capture card for this to work. So if you have like an Elgato capture card or something, so you plug that into your Quest um, and also into the other device. So let's say you could plug your iPhone into that and then your iPhone will be on Quest um, as well as like a PlayStation or, or a computer or anything, basically. It's like having those little glasses. I can't remember what they're called. Um Nreal or Xreal or yeah. something like that, and you know, but you can use your headset for it now. Um, it supports up to 1080p and 60 frames per second. Obviously, if you're having a computer, then you already have stuff like um, VR desktop, for example, or no, virtual desktop, sorry, and, and stuff like that. I could do this, but you know, so apparently, a lot of people loved wanted this, and it was like a really hot feature and right up on the big list, for Switch. So. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and the Steam Deck, as we've already mentioned it multiple times already today. Um, but the key thing to note is that if you wanted to do your like iPhone on it, um, the capture cards won't let you watch Netflix or Disney Plus or anything like that. Like they're the the protected where obviously that's like if you if you're gonna download a movie basically, so you, you can't do that. So that won't work if you wanted to watch Netflix on a massive screen on your iPhone through your Quest. Um, but uh, for anything else, it should be just fine. Would you would you use this for anything? I, I don't even know why the demand was there, but I'm just not the market, I don't think. I it. don't really have a use for it. The only use for it is right now when I have absolutely nothing in my house, not even a TV, but I wanted to still watch something on a big screen or not even watch something, like play something on something like that. But yeah. Okay, let's move on to the last news story um, of this. I mean, we might as well do what we've been playing it's in more this like, part. To be it's honest. more like an unnews story. Unnews story. <laughs> Samsung Meta confirms that GTA San Andreas for Quest is on hold indefinitely. Um, San Andreas is not coming. Uh, GTA San Andreas uh, is was what their quote is. Uh, um, sorry, let's say that again. On quote, GTA San Andreas is on hold indefinitely while we both focus on other projects. It's like saying, like, uh, we broke up with my girlfriend whilst we both focus on our own Here's selves, what I think, basically. Dan. Here's some <sighs> copium for us all. GTA 6 <laughs> is coming out soon. Yes. All hands on deck for GTA 6. Yeah. Screw whatever you're trying to do over here, Mark. All right? Hold on. We got, we got important stuff over here. Mm-hmm. We're trying to make billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. So then... GTA 6 comes out. It's a smooth sailing release. Things yeah, are looking likely. good. Then they can ease up. Then get back to work on GTA San Andreas VR. So Quest 6 or Quest 5, I think, um, potentially. Uh, well, the thing is, uh, they already canceled Max Payne 3 Remake. They already canceled Red Dead Redemption 1 remake that was meant to happen um they obviously put out the gta san andreas remake uh, and such but that did not go well um uh, with red that. dead's coming to pc i think red dead 2 the first one red dead 1 um yeah pretend- and red dead 1 came out for switch recently so i think it's also coming out for uh pc as well it may have already come out for pc no no. Um, okay, no, so but I think like... something leaked on like the PS, the Sony PlayStation page saying now playable on PC. Oh, I see, I see. Um, yeah, because Red Dead Redemption One came out on Switch last year. Uh, I want to say last year, maybe even this year. Um, but it was a weird one because it was just a and on a PlayStation as well. But it was a weird one because it was just a port. It wasn't like remastered or anything like that. They just it was weird. It was really odd. Like it was a shame because I was really looking forward to a, a remaster, um, but they just put just put it on. So um, the remaster got cancelled um, itself. So they might just be porting it because Red Dead Two is obviously on 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 the quest itself. So uh, yeah, they're they're not going. This is not a surprise. This is not a surprise. Um, I don't think you're going to see this uh, for a long, long time. Uh, also, by the time uh, the Quest 5 comes out, they might be like, forget San Andreas, we can port GTA 4, you know, with Nico Bellic. 4? Uh, I want San Andreas. So. 4 is great. I loved 4. Yeah, um, but it, it got too... It got dark in 4. Yeah. San Andreas was fun and wacky. It was more arcadey, yeah. Yeah, that's true, true, true. Um, Samson, I guess that will do for the news, but since this is a really tiny part, let's just get straight into what we've been playing to, to kind of wrap the show up here. No third part? What are we going to do for our ad break? There's the, no ad break. <laughs> we don't do ads. <laughs> we just, we just uh, post the Discord. Um, let's go into what we've been playing. Uh, Samson, I can see on our script here that you've been playing a lot, so I'll let you begin, and I'll say my one thing that I've been playing afterwards, so uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, I've been playing a little. So I got into the Among Us Containment. I played two Mm. nights last week. One of the nights I got in with Mike, Froggy, Jammy, and a few others. 
it's fun, Dan. Basically, what happens is the uh, the bad things that happen. I'm blanking on the word right now, <laughs> right, right when I need it. But the door is shutting, and the reactor going off, and the oxygen going off. All these things happen sort of mm. randomly, but after a certain amount of time. So they they are consistently happening, but you don't know which uh, if it'll be oxygen or reactor. The doors do close very consistently, though. Yeah. So it turns it into when you're the imposter, more a game of trying to time killing somebody, so you don't get locked in the in the same room with them, so you can kind of get away. There's mm. a freezer. So one time I killed Froggy in the back of the freezer and left him in there, Tomb Raider style. That was pretty good. I got a win, actually. I got three kills in a row without anybody finding the yeah. bodies. That was kind of nice. nice. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's a little, it's, it's just new strategy because it can be fun as imposter to do, you know, to close the door, lock yourself sabotage. in the room with somebody. Sabotage. To do this. Yes, there we go. Sabotage, to do yeah. the sabotages. But at the same time, it's sort of a new, just new things to think about. Mm. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking to get back into more Among Us because that was that was a lot of fun. It's uh, I guess it's 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 nice that there's a mode of like it's more fun as a crewmate because I I do find it more fun as the imposter in the normal game. Um, I hate always, it. I, it's, so, it's too stressful. Yeah, I have, I have a great time as the imposter. I find it really fun. I feel more stressful the other way around. <laughs> but yeah. yeah yeah fair enough fair enough um what else you got going yeah then i got into somebody mentioned this construct vr it's a volumetric movie and has a free demo so i mm. tried the free demo and the free demo got me to spend the three dollars for the full volumetric movie i'll read what the steam store stage steam store page says about it construct vr is an experience in the presence of movie format that showcases the technological breakthroughs of VR storytelling through volumetric photorealistic video powered by Vnova point cloud compression. Enter a science fiction dystopian world where a robot must fight for his life and the lives of his family. This is the first actual movie, the first actual action movie in six degrees of freedom, photorealistic VR exploring unprecedented and game-changing dimensions for the medium. And this was pretty cool. It was 30 mm. gigabytes. It's only wow. about seven, seven minutes long. Yep. But you feel like you're there. It, the, it cuts. There's a lot, you know, like you're watching a movie, an action movie, and there's a lot of cuts. Mm -hmm. I thought there were maybe a couple, a few too many cuts because uh, there were times where you, you can look around, right? So, like, things that would be out of frame in a normal movie, you can mm. just look and see. It was really cool. I, it made me, as mentioned previously, I want more of this content. So immediately I went seeking out more of this content. And uh, which led me to another one. Hold on. Before you go to the other one, the Construct VR, is that on Quest or is that on Steam only? No, this is Steam. This is Steam. Oh, okay. I, was, I wanted to try it out myself, <laughs> but never mind. Yeah. Never mind. There's another Steam one here called Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca Cosmic Journey is a virtual reality oh. film in which participants are immersed in visions triggered by a dose of ayahuasca. Each virtual trip is, is, own, is its own experience as different views and perspectives will reveal new ways of seeing and understanding. Tap into your inner sense of calm and lose yourself in the cosmic journey. And this was pretty wild, Dan. It's about 20 minutes long, mm -hmm. and it, it takes you on a trip. Now, I've never done ayahuasca or any other uh, hallucinogen, but I imagine that this was pretty similar. Because <laughs> it, was visually, it was visually very stunning. It takes over all your senses. It was pretty cool. If you're seeking out that type of experience... Without doing the drinks... I, I, I'd say I recommend it. Yeah, it looks pretty sick. Actually, I'm just looking at the um, the Steam, and it looks really, really out there. And yeah, the the psychedelics I, I have had in the past 
um, did not get me to this <laughs> this mm-hmm. kind of it, visuals. It was, it's <laughs> full price, uh, twelve ninety nine USD. I did mm-hmm. see that it's gone on sale before. If you want to just wish list and wait, in the volumetric movie it was two ninety nine. I think. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That looks really cool. Um, I mean, ayahuasca. Um, I have not had ayahuasca, no, but. Uh, it's meant to be a super, super, super psychedelic in terms of what it what it does, and um, yeah. So maybe maybe it does look like that. I could not tell you. I have no idea. But um, did you did you get anything from it? Did you come out of it and feel a sense of calm? Felt pretty did relaxed. I did, did it right yeah. before we did the spot. In fact, so oh, that's you got some ayahuasca so well. before we started. Nice. Yeah, I hopped into <laughs> ayahuasca precisely. <laughs> All right, you want to fit yours in? Because my next is sort of like... Smaller ones? Know. Okay. Um, yeah. I played a bit of Last Clockwinder. Um, the, in fact, I just, you know... The, the, I think the other day I was just sat... I, was, I had a free evening. I was sat there and uh, I was just scrolling Twitter. And uh, a friend of the show, Josh Folan, um, he replied to our last uh, podcast on, on Twitter uh, he said that I don't know if I'd go as far to say that it's the best game on the Quest platform to date, but the Last Clockwinder is 100% the best implementation of VR possibilities into a game setting to date. Uh, also, just a beautiful world, both thematically and visually, a must-play. So after he said that, I was like, you know, what? I'm not doing anything. It's like 9 p.m. on a Friday. Everyone's out the house. There's nothing in the house. I'm just going to go and grab that VR headset and start playing. So that's exactly what I did. So I grabbed it. I played, I don't know how many hours I played for it until I got a bit tired. But um, basically there's a big, there's a, there's a, there's a globe and um, there's like, it looks like there's three major sections. And I basically finished the first section um, of, of that globe and it's not what I expected, to be honest. Like, I, I knew the game already, The Last Quark Finders. People who, who don't know, we kind of mentioned it last uh, show as well. But it's it's a puzzle game where you use um, clones of yourself to complete the puzzles. If, if that, it's, hard, it's a hard one to explain it's without actually looking at it. Audio logs of some sort, right? Some sort yeah. of Yeah. So if you played a game like The Witness uh, um, on the flat screen, um, that has audio logs as a puzzle game. It's a similar kind of deal with that. Um, so the whole uh, the whole idea is that um, there's this um, there's this basically this massive tree of life, shall we say? Um, and you need to you need to go find your old mentor who was in that tree, um, who kept the tree alive, so all, everything around it could could keep alive. And um, the, the mentor said she's going to be the last clockwinder. That's the name comes by. Uh, and then you, as as you used to be a little girl, but now you're grown up and you're going back into the tree to try and figure out what happened to her basically and there's a bunch of audio logs and all the audio logs are basically um your mentor talking um kind of mentoring you um as you as you were a kid basically um so you're going through and you're trying to like fix everything up to to go through all of the rooms to kind of find find her if she's still alive or just discover what happened to her um, the audio logs are great. Um, the tapes are, are pretty much scattered. A, a few, just a few. There's not not too much, um, but the audio sounds really nice and crisp. And it's it's nice to play an audio log and then explore the little room that you're in whilst that's playing on in the background, which is really nice. Um, everything, at least from what I've played, everything revolves around one room. So you're in this room, but uh, you can switch to different rooms, but the way you switch to different rooms is that basically the platform of the room that you're in uh, drops down and then a new platform comes up with a brand new level. So you're always in the same kind of room, if you know and what I mean. It's changing in front of you. like It's changing in front of you. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I, I did a lot of tutorial kind of feel where you know, you're starting to utilize the 
the use of clones. So there's basically these berries. I, I, I can't remember the names. I should have wrote them down. I just wrote, I have been playing the last Cup Winder, but uh, it's all from memory. But there's these berries that you need to kind of travel to all the different rooms and you need the berries as kind of fuel. So you can uh, find um, a seed and you can plant it. And then once you put it into this like container, um, you can harvest basically the berry for, for, this, for this fuel. Now you go around and you find a bunch of berries and then uh, what I've done is I've, I've created a bunch of clones, like about 10 clones who are com completely feeding those berries over and over again. So it's pretty cool because that's in, that's in like one room and then when, as soon as you switch to a different room, you can still see your berry counter still going up. So it's like working in the background still. Um, which is really cool to see. But then as you get more into the game, there's other types of berries as well. There's like, there's one berry that um, uh, I'm not I'm actually not sure what it does. At the moment, it just takes me to a different room that I can only unlock with a, a, a certain level amount of those berries. But uh, this berry um, kind of, if you hold it for too long, it just evaporates. Um, so what you need to do with the clones is as soon as you get the berry, you need to throw it. And then once you throw it, um, you go over to where you'll, you'll throw it to and you'll do another clone and then you'll grab the berry and you'll throw it again. And you'll keep throwing it across the room until you get it into its container so you can harvest it and such. And it's, it's so fun to, to play with, with the clones. Um, you basically have a recorder feature. So you press the, um, I think it's the X button on your left controller and then that starts your, your, your timer of the clones. So basically whatever you do gets cloned. Um, so if I catch the berry and then throw it and then, you know, then I stop. It, it, it's t I can't remember the actual timer, but there's, it's a set time. But then as you go forward into the game, there is a way to um, change the timer. So you can do like a one second one, you could do like a, a four second one, or I think like a 10 second one. I can't remember the exact times, but you can do different times eventually. But Samson, it got to a point where there was one, there was one specific puzzle where um, you had to harvest um, these, these seeds. And the way to do it is that you needed to connect three berries together. Like you were connecting like a chemistry um, kind of, are you connecting like a chemical molecule basically um, and to do it. And then you put it into this machine, you, pre you, you squash it down and then you get this tiny little seed. So you need to, you can need to kind of make that once and uh, well over and over again and the way you do it is so so cool and clever like you need a clone to to a clone on the right then you need a clone on the left then you need to throw it across the room then you need to put it in the masher and then you need a clone to catch the the seeds that that fire off towards you and then you need to throw it into the container so you need to catch and throw and then once i like nailed that puzzle if that makes any sense as i'm describing it i just sat back and just watched it over and over again and watching my clones doing the work <laughs> and i was like this is pretty cool this is really impressive like you, you get to the point where you do like once you've fig figured out one puzzle you do want to step back and just have a look and just watch them just continue and it's very kind of therapeutic so um i'm really enjoying the game uh, really really enjoying the game uh, it's it's really fun to play it's really clever and the way that it just runs in the background like there's no I, i've experienced no glitching no lagging no nothing like that like i've had like tens or 15s of clones um on the screen at once and nothing's slowing down or anything like that like it, it runs really well um and it's a really in a way a simple puzzle game it's not like a a red matter in a way where it can you know uh, you fade know you a little bit yeah yeah, like Red Matter is like a, a solid puzzle game. A Mist would be like a hardcore puzzle game, if you know what I mean. Uh, this will be more of a like um, a chilled puzzle game, you know. Like if if it, there's a game, I think I spoke about this before. Um, there's a game called Cocoon, uh, which I finished recently, actually, maybe about a month or two ago, on the PlayStation. It's also on the Switch and on the on Steam as well. Uh, amazing for the Steam Deck or any handhelds like a Switch as well. It's, it's perfect for that. Um, I played it on the uh, PlayStation Portal. Uh, but Cocoon is a beautiful puzzle game. It's made by similar people who made Inside and Limbo. But that was a similar kind of thing where it's it's a more of a, like a casual puzzle game. Like it wasn't it wasn't overly difficult. You might be stuck for f like five minutes or something, or maybe next time you'll come back and you'll get it immediately. But it's nothing to like nothing frustrating or anything like that. And so far, I've not obviously finished this game yet, but so far, 
um, it's like that. Um, it's a really relaxing kind of puzzle game and uh, really, really enjoying it. Um, I can't wait to play more once I have some more time um, in the afternoons uh, whilst I'm moving here. But yeah, great uh, suggestion by Josh. Um, I was on my list for ages, but I'm really glad I stepped in. So yeah, that's the last clock winder. Um, back to you, Samson. There you have it. <clears throat> uh, well, I got into a little more Ocean Rift, put my girlfriend's daughter into that set up the much of the basement to be an aquarium and she was looking at the whales the sharks there's one that i think is is like dinosaur times you know Mm. way back then and then there was a huge friggin' spider looking thing out there (laughs) and Mm. i just thought about how scared you'd you'd have been uh, so yeah, no, she was just you. like run. She was running all around, following him from one to the other. You know, seeing yeah. him on the ceiling. Uh, it was a good time. This is very. I wish there were. A, I wish there was a little bit more or an option to have some interactivity. You know, like maybe you could throw something into them or shine a light. I don't. I don't know. I'm not the scientist, but it, it is a good time for for brief times until she gets bored of just looking out the windows. Nice. Very good. That's ocean rift. It is nice. It is. Well, uh, breachers Friday night, fill the lobby. Course. Good time. Five on five tactical shooter. Mm. Uh, we've you know been getting is. it. We've been getting it a lot more of the control point, which mm. is where you have to control the points. <laughs> Uh, for right. a certain amount of time and go all around the map. But right. there's a lot more, you know, every time you die, you just come right back. And yeah. I've been loving the shotgun and holding it out one handed. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. So much fun. Remember, I, I think the first hundred episodes of this podcast is every, every episode where there was a mention of synth riders. And I think the next 50 so far has been, <laughs> has been breaches. <laughs> and I think that's going to continue. I did. Actually, that reminds me because I did also get into Synth Riders with uh, multiplayer with Joyce and Pro Stud from the Discord. And we've been playing tomorrow uh, after day of recording Wednesday uh, at 9 a.m. We've got it'll be our second week in a row. I think, mm. Dan, and we we got we got some good going on here Wednesday morning. So if yeah, Wednesday morning is 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Eastern, you uh find yourself wanting about an hour of synth riders we and and pro stud is good we yeah. we, we yeah the my first the first level i accidentally it was from it was saved from when i was doing a workout so i did three it was three times speed master and pro stud beat me he, he came in first place wow and whoo i was like Whoa, wow man but uh you gotta put some practice back in but that was <laughs> the th- that was it yeah i, I was thrown off I yeah. lost lost a little bit of tracking. I my pro controllers have now been disconnected because they were giving me oh. uh, issues. So I had to. I was when I was trying to play in this, they they weren't showing up, and I was like, all right, screw this. So I just I played on my PlayStation. You've been having a lot of issues with those controllers, haven't you? Mm-hmm. They're on they're on the they're on the sideline now again. Yeah, considering the the but, expensive, um, it's kind of annoying but never mind never mind um anything else anything else yeah yep 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 i uh, got it put my girlfriend's daughter also into kayak vr i mm. bought the uh soka valley dlc but it was downloading the whole time we were playing didn't get into it yet so hopefully in the near future mm-hmm. i'll be able to get into that dlc and last but not least she played a lot with hello dot i wish there was a little bit more to do with hello dot mm. with that little character she was putting she figured out how to put her into the little bucket and she figured out how to call the animal around like you can mm. point and she'll go there or you can put her out put your hand out and she'll come there uh she was loving that for for a good amount of time actually nice. and then uh other than that i just got into walkabout which uh the people are wanting you back in the walkabout tournament stand. The people I want to get back to. I want to get back to. This, this get, was the yeah. segue. Yeah, I wanted to get back to, but um, maybe in the next next two weeks when I've got gotten to Toronto. But uh, anyway, give us the walkabout update for season five, Samson, and then we yes. can round off the show with our walkabout. Uh, Standing. ideally ideally so this is a nice 90 minute episode hope you enjoyed <laughs> this one inferno 
<laughs> so last week, week one, we had Mo- Arizona Modern Easy and Wallace and Gromit Hard. And mm-hmm. the easy course for races, uh, yours truly, Dan. Oh, you I won. finished in five minutes and 31 seconds. Wow. Impressive. Uh, nearly 30 seconds ahead of the second place person <laughs> wow my maestro it. and parody finish at about six minutes so it's about the top three mm. and then on the hard course uh, i finished in the bottom three so i was decidedly <laughs> not top three Fair it was enough. parody with five and a half minutes 533 to be exact mm. and then kimmy kai and maestro uh followed up that was second and third with 541 and 545 wow fantastic Tell me about the scores. Um, obviously, let's start start with the easy first with Arizona uh, Modern. Um, how did the folks do? The folks did quite well with the Maestro coming in third place with minus 20, Parody for Life coming in second place at minus 21, and Rock mm. and Horse Brat coming in first place. Congratulations with minus 22. Parody and Rock and Horse Brat are always neck and neck, Dan. It's crazy. Yeah, they are literally the same kind of players. Um, that's impressive. But like a really close top three there, just a shot in in it for each each one there. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, impressive scores, impressive scores. Um, now, before we move on to the hard mode, I just, I've heard, as I, I mean, I've, I've just been watching on the Discord as uh the the folks com- you know as, as yourself and all the discord community um rage about what is and comment hard in terms of how difficult this course is um i've just been watching observing i'm like oh wow uh, i gotta play this one uh, we're gonna get back into that and try and play it myself samson how did you find how did you find in particular first awful. before we look at everyone else how do we how did you find what all and comment hard Awful, awful. There's always a, a, a two to four holes that just that just completely choke me up. I mm. and I actually I got my plus sixteen here, and then I played it again, and I think I got nine, but I couldn't find that scorecard, and I was like, you know what, nine's not that much better than sixteen, so I'm just gonna keep <laughs> keep this one. Pretty that good I have. to me, <laughs> and it and it goes well with my easy that was minus sixteen. It was you know nice. I like yeah. symmetry. Yeah, but fair enough. we only had two people below par this round wow. and dave congratulations for coming in third at nice par dave. zero wow and then That's parody really for really life really good call. yeah parody for life in second place at minus six and rock and horse brat at minus 11 somehow wow. some way wow minus it's 11. crazy it's crazy that's really good that's really good um impressive scores i think i think I don't. I think my best score in in Wallace and Gromit easy is like minus two or minus three, uh, let alone minus eleven for hard mode. So that's it's crazy. That's incredible. Uh, a lot of yeah, folks on you. plus plus one as well. I, I see Liana, um, uh, Kimi Kai, and Maestro all on plus one. Yeah, uh, as well. So amazing. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, thank you everybody for playing and. Uh, Next week, week two, we have Sweet Topia Easy and Bogey's Bonanza Hard. Ah, Sweet Topia. Sweet Topia. I find Sweet Topia hard. <laughs> I find it hard. I find like the waffles sometimes hard. Not as bad as when the blueberries come into play on, on hard. But I find the marshmallows like incredibly hard. Um, I find some of the, the, what's the, is it the gum? Uh, the one with the like the pink gum or whatever that kind of candy is uh you have to hit it across the bridge and it's it's on these three metal like mixes oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like the um cotton candy is that cotton candy i think is so. that cotton candy yeah okay so the cotton candy yeah i find that one hard but yeah uh sweet topi easier and bogus brands are hard um very very good um right that'll do i think that that's a decent show there we've got 90 minutes of of content right there uh next week we'll obviously go into if there's anything else uh vr related for for gamescom um or that comes out for sure uh samson what's what's going on with you is there anything else you wanted to mention be patient in time even an egg will walk especially if it's good atama would an egg walk but Gudetama gets around. I don't know who Gudetama is. 
you gotta you gotta google it <laughs> okay it's a uh, it's a pretty good netflix show though i recommend it gudatama is it like a oh i see i see it yeah i see it gudatama uh, it's like a squashed egg he doesn't look very happy he looks very tired he's hilarious and he's in a little wheelchair does he use bacon as a blanket <laughs> Just go to Tom and Netflix and just and just and watch it. Just just enjoy it's the, not the, the I assure night. you it's it's not much of a commitment. An excellent adventure. Gudatama. Okay. Hundred percent rotten tomatoes. Holy moly. The there tomatoes are loving the eggs. I told um, you. Okay, I need to maybe this is tonight's entertainment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> before bed. Uh, okay, Gudatama, everybody. Uh, we'll see you we'll see you next week. Bye now. <laughs>